All right, we are live. Welcome, welcome to our chat about Empire I don't have to get the book out. of the Vampire. Can I sell this yet? I know for real. No, I feel I, like with your, like your, your deep smoky voice right now, Alex, you should be the one to say Empire of the Vampire. Empire of the Vampire. <laughs> the Wait, why is yours red? I don't know. Why is, is like yours black? Because this is just the regular. Is yours a special I, edition? There are like five different editions of this book. I have <laughs> there were no like five different editions of the arc of this book. So, <laughs> no, I, I don't actually know. Um, is it like maybe the Barnes and Noble edition? I mean, I got it from Barnes and Noble, so oh, maybe it probably. doesn't say that it's like a special edition. But... They might have like had a sticker on it that got taken off. Probably. Yeah, I do I'm like pretty sure Schwab the said that it's is. bloody brilliant, though. <sighs> Gotta stay on brand. So for those of you that don't know, we both love this book so much we couldn't wait to talk about it. <laughs> All right. So, hello. Yes. Know what we're doing. Yeah. We 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 don't um we can't contain our excitement <laughs> about this book. Hello, hello. Yes, gothy me. Um, Alex really kind of like dropped the ball in every sense. I did. Um, didn't finish the book. Didn't get dressed up. Didn't put makeup on. Did I not used. I, I mean, you could have put up some like black velvet drapes behind you to like where over there in the, the you know from the ceiling in the middle of the room to just like create an ambiance. I mean, I can put on like a witch's hat or something. Would that be helpful? A witch's hat? You really didn't finish reading this book, Alex. This is not a witchy book. Oh my god! I mean, it, it's Halloween season. I don't know what else you want from me. Just the, vampires. My black lipstick. Uh, the thumbnail is a lie. <laughs> one half one half of it was a lie <laughs> it's all been bamboozled it's okay i'll just photoshop i'll go back after we finish the live and i'll download the footage and i'll just photoshop in some black lips to hover around your face like a, those instagram filters go to those extreme lengths to do that it'd be hilarious <laughs> true than advertising i do like that you asked my permission <laughs> to put that thumbnail up though <laughs> like i was gonna be mad i was like no i don't, <laughs> I, don't I mean i feel like the type of um Okay, we're just going to talk about this book, right? So, like, I feel like there's some, some fragile point. masculinity at play. And I feel like that kind of fragile masculinity would be like, you made me look not masculine in this thumbnail. Therefore, <laughs> this is unacceptable. I mean, we are talking about a really, really manly book. So, can't have, can't have you embarrassing me. Tell us your new favorite book, Alex. <sighs> It's, uh, I know why you DNF'd it. It's because you were like, I want to savor it. I don't want to rush yes. through this. So so, I think... <laughs> so when I read Patrick's review of this, where he literally said he hate read the first 400 <laughs> pages, and then the second half of the book was a five out of five, which my brain just can't comprehend. I actually loved the first 300 pages so much that I was like, this book's perfect. I don't need to read another 439 pages of this because it's great. It's just That's perfect the way it is. You don't want to mess with a good thing. Exactly. It's Too like when you have a good meal a and you don't want to order dessert because like the flavor in your mouth is so good. You just like don't want to mess it up. I usually get halfway through dinner and I just throw it away. because I'm like, why would I finish this meal? Like mm -hmm. it was perfect. If, it, if it's a good meal, if it's a bad meal, you finish it. But if it's a good one, you stop halfway and then throw it away. If it's great, you get to 40 percent and then you mm -hmm. say, you know what? I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't need. Yes. Yes. I DNF'd it. This book sucks <laughs> ass. OK, this is one of the worst books I've ever uh, read. But I am excited <laughs> to tell you about things that you didn't get to experience cool but i can I'm, talk about stuff that i did experience I was like, it doesn't make it up awful. for the fact that i had to experience it in order to tell you about it. <laughs> all of it was was awful it was the worst i don't understand how people like this book because it's written as if jay christoph was an angsty 15 year old trying to be cool you're really this is insulting to angsty 15 year olds it probably is but <laughs> jesus christ man because like i don't know if you've seen gen z out here they're pretty mature <laughs> i think i mean they would take umbrage all i gotta say is i question every single author that gave i know author reviews don't mean anything but yeah, every author I, that I, mean, I respect that gave this five out of five robin, robin hobb, hobb john this. john <laughs> freaking john gwynn v schwab i'm like this is not Okay. Oh, get into the spirit. Okay, so I'm gonna start saying fuck a lot. Wait, only if you also say we. I will say we. I will say merci, and I will say 
What, what's the other French word that he uses randomly? Uh, mi, uh, ma famille. Oh, my fa- <laughs> <laughs> Ma famille. God, I hated that so much. Um, yeah, so I question everybody that gave this a five out of five, especially <laughs> authors that I respect, because this makes no goddamn sense to my brain. Um, once again, so I'll say instead of 15, let's call it a, an angsty 13-year-old that like had a bad day and is in like a goth phase. It's like, I'm just going to be... What, how do I make this really fucking cool? Um, you know what? I'm just going to say that this is really fucking cool. Okay, I'm going to tell my fucking story. And I really fucking hope you're not trying to monetize this video because it's going to get fucking demonetized immediately. I mean, basically, if we want to talk about anything that happens in this book at all and not just be like, uh, then yeah, it right. will be instantly demonetized. I mean, Jesus, there was like 400 fucks in this book. It it literally was one of those things where, and I don't know if the second half he tones down on this or not. Um, Whatever you're about to say. <laughs> it was just like, I. there's so much emphasis on instead of just writing good, good words, good sentences, he's just like, I'm just going to keep saying fuck. And or I love the I'm, word fuck. If I'm not going to say fuck, then I'm going to say something in French or I'm going to make a joke that's like in some way about like female genitalia or being a whore oh or menstruation or, you know. Yeah, I'm sure that was fun for you to read, wasn't it? <laughs> as fun as the rest, honestly. It's uh-huh. just like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Like, I just, I don't understand. Like, why... This is supposed to be set in France, right? Like the entire point is that they're all French, but it's like he doesn't know French. Well, it's also, I mean, it's generally so a like... pet peeve, like of mine. Um, <laughs> like in any book or uh, movies too, I guess. Like when something is supposedly taking place, you know, in Germany or in France or whatever, and so then like everyone's speaking in English, so mm-hmm. then like I understand it or I interpret it as like. Basically, this is like real time translated. Like we're supposed to assume they are speaking French right now, yeah, but we are hearing it, it in you English don't... because. But if they also because, start yeah. using French words, then it's I'm like, so wait, dumb. are they not speaking French this whole time? It's so, so dumb, <laughs> and I feel like it was Jay Krusoff being like, "This is going to be pretty cool." <laughs> Good lord. Okay, so the review, first of all, yes, 100. <laughs> percent It's not for kids, but it's also only for kids because what respected, like self respecting adult, reads this shit. And I was like, this is really great writing. I really loved, let me let me pull up one of the, the best lines of the book. Um, his, well, this is like 0% in. This is great. This is super moving stuff. The sky was dark as sin. The horizon. Red as his lady's lips the last time he kissed her. Shut the fuck up. Um, let I me have go to tell you the book though. also ends with that same. I didn't realize that love those it. were the exact same words. <laughs> love <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> you know what I love more than that? is uh you cling to that railing like to your mother's tits i'm actually picturing your mama's tits there's literally a your your mama's joke in this okay, epic fantasy so, of sophisticated french vampires well, well on the happening? subject of tits later in the book when he's having his own Geralt and siri um shenanigans where he's yeah. hanging out with this child um, because he literally just rewrote Geralt, but made it worse <laughs> he says some her he tells her to call him her tits and I was like, really? <laughs> Calm your tits? And then, and then, later when he's bugging her about something, she tells him to get off her tits about this. You know, the way, As like, get would. off my back. You know, like, because, you know, get off my tits is definitely an expression <clears throat> that but that we say. Get off my tits. It's tits definitely something that all women say. First especially children women. <laughs> Ex- yeah. Um, especially in, a, in an epic fantasy surrounding vampires and silver saints and definitely not the catholic church um i just who is this for like i don't I, it's for jay Kristoff. i i don't understand but okay you may have heard someone in the chat said they've heard calm your tits yeah people say yes, that as a joke too but if i was reading wheel of time and moraine was having a fit with rand and he was just like calm your tits okay i'd be like what no which but like in fairness calm your tits is actually an expression but get off my tits <laughs> about this that's just not a thing in any time it's period true. in any universe <laughs> it's just not a thing but even if it was <laughs> wh- why is it in here in this book why are yo mama jokes in this book like and then people praise you. his prose his 
his purple prose. Well, it's so, it's so I mean, beautiful. Truth be told. Oh my god. It, uh, the prose is actually in truth. Uh one of my favorite things, if I were to speak truth, is reading in truth how fucking beautifully truth be told this prose really was <laughs> can't forget <Wait>. the truth <laughs> and i, I checked with mafa me and we oh my god they concur if truth so be told. yes back to that so it's like they're supposed to be french just they're french but the book's in english so we can read it like mm -hmm. that's fine you, you don't have to do that. And like, like if the proper nouns for things all have a French vibe, you know, like the names of people, the names of places all sound French. Like yeah. that can be French, but like what mm -hmm. you're saying, I'm assuming what you're saying is in French and I'm hearing it in English because I don't understand French. Yeah. I'd be like me just walking around saying gracias to everybody. Just, but that's like the only <laughs> Spanish do. word I use. Like that's <laughs> please it. Please do. Like just please and thank you in Spanish. That's all. No also reason. your family oh yeah me familia yeah. there you go <laughs> just gotta throw that one around i wish that your last name was an animal so that we could also make lots and lots and lots of of references, references. To it. <laughs> i mean it does loosely translate to snow because nieve is snow so what if i just talk okay. about snow all the time yes i can tell you how frosty you're being about things exactly. after all i can call you cold blood yes Sick. We've come full circle. I may not do it right away, though. Patience, cold blood. Oh, my God. <laughs> so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk okay. about. So apparently get off my tits is a thing in Australia and New Zealand. Um, uh, to which I just got to say, <sighs> cool. sir, I thought this book was supposed to be French in tone, not in the outback of France. <laughs> like, what is this? So to everyone that tells me, as as much as they like to say it, this is a very Aussie book. I don't know what that means. I'm not Australian, and if very Aussie translate to dog shit, sure. Uh, this book is terrible. So, well, and then we also got him using words like "ken," you know, like "I yeah, can." What, when um, did that happen? Why? Like several times, and I was like, "Are we in Scotland also?" <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Um, so I really don't know what he thought he was going for with this. Yeah. Um, so the plot, um, before we get to the plot, can you talk about <laughs> the brilliant introduction to this book that people, uh, without, with, you know, with a straight face use as like why this book is so fucking rad of like him, him just blatantly being like, this is my feeling about God. <laughs> Like before the book even starts, I'm just like, okay. I got some deep thoughts, guys. <laughs> In this blog filled with gifts, I will tell you about how God, you know, he's not all that. And I, I can prove it. He might not be as good as you think. He might just be a prick. A like, prick? okay. You called God a prick. Oh my God. This is so edgy. Oh, super feel... edgy. <sighs> super edgy. Okay, so yeah, the plot. Sure, let's go with that. Well, okay. So, like, <clears throat> it's very hard to actually watch to, like, offer, like, literary criticism of this book because mostly I'm just like, but it's so stupid and garbage. But, like, nope. as a as a book, um, I, I'm very, very, very irritated by the, um, I don't know, the nar narrative device of, like, how it's being told. Um, so, like, there's lots of books where a character is telling their own story. Like, totally. But usually those books, like, because it it's a bit of a stretch, usually, mm -hmm. that a character would be telling them their story in a novel, basically. Yeah. And so usually in those circumstances, um, we don't really cut back very often, if at all, to a point where the character is telling that story. We're just kind of like, I'm going to tell my story. And then and dot, then dot, the dot, happens. it begins. And you're yeah. just like, I guess they're out loud saying all this, but like. Or like Sun Eater even, where it's like, he starts out by saying like, I'm telling my story now. And then at the very end of the book, he's like... And even then, like, like Sun Eater, like, it seems like he's writing his own story. Yeah. So in which case, like, if I'm sitting down to write my memoir, sure, it's going to sound novelly. Or like in the case of Name of the Wind, like, which is what Kristoff comped this to. I mean, Quoth is like, I'm a storyteller. Sit down and write this down. I'm going to narrate to you and I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to gild the lily and and whatever. And even then... The book happens like he like in the present day, it's like a, mm. a third person narrator that's saying this is going on. And then 
most of book happens where it's just yeah. like I'm telling my own story. It's in first person, but it's just book happening. And then we have a different chapter where it's an interlude where we cut back to the present and yeah. it's third person again. And then we go back into the story, but it's not like ongoing. And mm -hmm. it's just so unbelievable to me that this character who is under duress being forced to tell his own story and is like, I'm going to tell it my way in the most lurid detail. And he's going to jump around in the timeline to, so, so that he can surprise his audience who he hates and does not <laughs> want to be telling his story. Which is my favorite thing to tell you is that he has a surprise, which I definitely guessed immediately what that would be. Quite like, the showsman. Towards the end of the story, there's like a, we cut, that's why we jump around in the timeline. And, and then it's, you know, it's that his wife and child are dead. Sorry, spoilers. Huh. Um, so he's acting like they're at home this whole time and he keeps saying they're at home this whole time and he keeps seeing visions of them and then like the girl's like i figured it out they are at home because that's where you buried them and dun dun dun, dun, dun. because we <laughs> like jumped over that and i was like what person under duress who does not want to be telling their own story would be telling their story where like everything that i felt sexually while i was being multiple times pleasured by multiple different women and all of the blood and all of the feelings and then like I have to withhold information so it's a bigger surprise mm -hmm. to you my my jailer when i tell you that which you already know his jailer definitely knows that this guy's wife and child are dead uh -huh. because he lives in this world with this character so like i just the fact that the whole thing was in quotes the whole time and in the middle of a scene we would get an insertion of the jailer being like, oh, ho, Gabriel, you on, did a on. thing right there. And I'd be like, oh, my God, because, right, I'm supposed to believe that everything you're saying right now is you sitting in a cell saying this right now. And that is just so ridiculous. It's also weird to me that he, of course, had to be like, so back when I was 15, let me tell you about the first time I drank blood. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to know about your going down on your period girlfriend and taking it too far and drinking her <laughs> blood from her vagina. We needed to know. We yeah. needed to know. Mm-hmm. That's what I forget who it was. I watched a review. So to say like the scene immediately after that, keep in mind he just left doing this. So he's covered <laughs> in blood and then kissed his mom on the face. Mm. I was like, mm. <laughs> okay, this is what we're doing. I guess it's a B movie that revels in its schlock, but but also I don't think Kristoff knows that. That's what I was gonna bad. say. B movies know exactly what they are, and I'm not sure this book does because it also really tries to be cool and like fancy and sophisticated. And with the whole like my wife and child, who are the only thing I've ever loved in this world, and they are dead. It's like, okay. I mean, sure, I'll take your word for it. Maybe he knows. But even but. then, B movies don't tend to be so homophobic and misogynistic. Which, There's also um, that. It's lots and lots of fun. <laughs> so fun. Leanna, how many female characters get treated well in this book? Uh... Well, the mom got kissed on the face with blood. But other than that, oh, but I think, are we to understand that she and she was consenting when she conceived our main character? Not sure. I so like I guess that. his mom. <laughs> because she had sex with a vampire. Mm -hmm. She knew it. Yeah. What happened to all the other female characters in the book, though? did not have a great time unless they were into each other in which case they had a good time and we got to have a good time seeing them have a good time mm -hmm. as one does uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> how Dillion is weaker than the other half bams but then it makes him into a special snowflake I mean in every sense our main character is a special snowflake <laughs> But, you know, it's because he has the heart of a lion. I don't know if you're aware that De Leon refers to a lion. And so he has the heart of a lion, a little no lion, lion-hearted De Leon. Truth be told. I Truth be fucking told. 
I had no. I cannot tell you. Like, I legitimately that. started flinching every time there was the word truth or yeah. true. Like, find a different phrase. It doesn't make it old timey that everyone that he keeps saying truth be told in yeah. truth. If I were to speak truth, like, ah, uh, <laughs> you don't need to keep saying that. For me, it was more of the swearing just felt childish for me. And it was like he couldn't write anything actually impactful without just saying fuck. Like that doesn't I think I think you didn't get there, but there was a scene where three characters just said fuck. You told fuck. me about that. Fuck. Like just the, the three. Like I get it that it could be funny, but at the same time, if it's every single impactful scene, he was just like, How do I make this edgy or dark? or cool or impactful and it was just throwing the word fuck in there and that just doesn't work after your 40th time and then he does it like 300 more times it's just obnoxious to me especially because it also has the tone not of like oh in this world they're just casually saying fuck because they mm. just casually say it it feels very like look how many times i said fuck isn't that so like cool and edgy yeah i don't know there's every time i like i i don't think i've ever eye rolled as much reading a book as i have at this I mean, like so many paragraphs and I was just like, if we are meant to think that this is complete schlock, like a B movie, I Mm -hmm. mean, it, the New York, uh, James Rollins, the big, huge blurb on the back says, J. Kristoff latest dark fantasy empire of the vampire is a Gothic bloodbath that will leave any reader, including this one breathless. The story is a vast apocalyptic canvas reminiscent of Justin Cronin's The Passage, even Stephen King's The Stand. Yet Kristoff's work stands on its own ruthless merit as the opening gambit of a richer tale yet to unfold. I can't wait to return again to this rich, lush, and bloody world. Until then, read this book now. Um, So that's the thing that was like, if you listen to like, um, I guess like five star reviews of this book, they're not talking about how like, over the top and wink wink it was they're talking about how legitimately this is just one of the best dark fantasy novels that they've read which i can't take it seriously because i don't feel like it's trying to be that i feel like he's trying to be cool and edgy like if you're telling me to interpret this the way that i interpret rings of power to actually intentionally be a comedy in which case i could enjoy it because like oh you meant this to be dumb then okay but i'm pretty sure amazon and just uh jay christoph i don't think either of them (laughs) realize that they have written comedy (laughs) but it's also it's like if you i i get it like it's vampires so there's always a level of schlock that comes with vampires because people can't help themselves but it's like campiness yeah but like if you take something like true blood or vampire diaries or buffy like buffy is meant to be kind of like dumb and schlocky but like true blood to its i guess credit is meant to be more adult and like serious but even then it's like they can't help themselves sometimes i feel like that might just be a problem with writing vampires and he just took it to like the next level of like i i can't help myself and i'm gonna do this every single paragraph to the point where it's just nonsense which also it just makes it monotonous i'm just like if you have like a scene that's like uh an insane bloodbath um it's like okay so the boys you know like on amazon the show Mm -hmm. like it's i don't it's a pretty dark show and it's pretty Mm -hmm. serious but it also is like taking the piss and being kind of funny and a lot of the gory scenes because some of them are serious yeah some of them are serious and some of them are like really absurd gory scenes but Mm -hmm. they are also genuinely gory and also they're not all the time so Mm -hmm. like every so often there's an episode where there's just like insane like orgy of violence and it's like or a literal holy shit but it's not all the time and most of the time it's pretty low key and it kind of earns its moments and like butcher going around saying fuck all the time like isn't doesn't feel like oh look how edgy butcher is being because he keeps saying fuck well that's the thing is like imagine if first law was told where every character in their internal monologue or when they were having a conversation was just saying fuck all the time like it would just be annoying like why well, also, every single character's sense of humor was the exact same. Like, there yeah. wasn't, like, different characters with different personality types interacting in co- comedic ways. Like, mm-hmm. the type of snark that we got from the kid that he's with that's his own Siri yeah. is, like, the same humor that Gabriel has, which is the same humor that the vampires have, which is mm-hmm. the same humor that everyone... Everyone is either, like, an evil villain that speaks in Shakespeare-ish phrases, yeah. or they have the same humor that Gabriel does. 
Yeah, so I understand that Buffy was comedy horror in action, but that was kind of my point is like it knew what it was. Everyone talks about this book that likes this book as if it's some like great epic fantasy novel. They don't talk about it being over the top hilarious that like it's all wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like a B movie because no one talks about it like that. They say that, oh my God, this is actually a really cool adult. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> this book is not, it's not for children, but also it definitely is written for 14 year olds. Because I don't understand how you think this is cool. I also don't understand at what point I was supposed to feel hooked by this plot. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I know any situation where a character is telling their own story, you know they survive, they're telling their own story, fine, yeah. whatever. But like, so he's just like rambling about his like sexual exploits and, and violence and whatever. I'm just like, I, what is the plot? Like, what what is this hook that I'm supposed to be like, I can't wait to find out this, or I need to see him overcome this, or yeah. this is a deep mystery that, I mean, we have him talking about how God is an asshole and he's got some deep thoughts about that. We have him talking about all of the many times that he has pleasured someone or been pleasured by someone. And we have lots of the word fuck. And lots of actual violence was just like yeah. blood everywhere. And it's just like it's just, just happening in a yeah. series of events. I also find a it series weird. of unfortunate events. That's what this book should be called. <laughs> so Urza said, how old are the characters? So Gabriel is like in his thirties when he's telling his story. Right. And then he goes back to like when he's 15 and then he's like 32 and then he's like 17. And then because he's constantly jumping back and forth but like because despite the fact that he doesn't want to be telling this story he wants to tell it in a way that includes some surprises for his audience of one yeah i mean sure if see so okay people are saying that like it's dumb fun and somebody just said that's why they also read sarah j mass like i hate that shit which is why i hated this and i literally asked leon i was like i don't know if this is unfair to sarah j mass but like is this just sarah j mass for dudes because that's what it feels like. And I, okay. I guess that's partially what it is. So Sarah J. Mass for dudes. Um, but then there well, are people that read Sarah J. Mass. Yeah. There's some people that read Sarah J. Mass and go, that's a bit of fun. And there's some mm -hmm. people that read Sarah J. Mass and say, her world building is some I of the best that incredible. I've ever seen. And her characters, the character work is just amazing. And I'm just like, no. You have Jashana who's like, friend. no, I'm here for the fairy sex. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking this seriously. <laughs> Which I'm like, fair. Yeah. But, um... Like, okay, so help me because I'm 32. If I was retelling my life to someone, I'm quite positive Wait. that I would not go into great detail of what happened when I was 15 sexually. That's because you're not in jail and someone's not making you tell <laughs> but your that's, story. Like, that's weird, isn't it? It's super weird. Like, how old? Okay, so when they... The, the Imagine thing sitting loved. across from someone who's like, tell me your life story. And you're like, fuck you, never. I hate you. I hate everything that is your kind. I devoted my life to murdering all of you. No, you must tell me your life story. Fine. So, okay. So when okay. I was 17, <laughs> my girlfriend at the time was sucking my dick. And while she did that, lo and behold, she sunk her fangs into it. And long after I completed, she was still sucking. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You're telling this That's to That's weird. Let me... Sorry, I... I misrepresented the scene. Let me read what actually happened um, prior to his climax. Because th this is a long paragraph, so I'm going to skip a little bit, okay? Um, as long as you don't <laughs> skip any of the French. I don't know if he actually uses French in this paragraph, to be fair. But so this is when I was like, this is just Sarah J. Mass for dudes. Because when he's when he's writing this... He's talking about her kisses descended and she hissed in pleasure pain at the sizzling touch of silver ink to her mouth. But there were no tattoos below my belt, no aegis to bar the way to her prize. And there at last she sank, sighing as she reached into my britches and set me free, aching at hot and cool of her hand. Continuing down, she's stroking him. Things are happening. Now imagine saying those words about yourself to your jailer. <laughs> to your interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> to the person who has you in jail. Anyway, she dragged me even higher into a starless, burning heaven. And all I knew was the feel of her, the sound of her, the hungry moans and silken flickers pulling me ever closer to my brink. And at last, as I fell somewhere between the sighs and the blinding light of the flood of my little death into her waiting mouth. What the fuck, dude? 
I felt it. The stab of twin razors, a slice of agony amid the bliss. So she's biting his dick. A rush of red before the rush of my ending. So he's profusely bleeding out of his cock in her mouth and also coming. Uh, and she drank long after I finished. Still, she drank. Who? I'm not squeamish, but like, who the fuck is this written for? I mean, as your jailer, I would like you to continue. I don't get it. <laughs> but also, okay, so if this is like Kindle Unlimited that, Smutty That's scene, what I'm saying, though. Do the authors of Kindle Unlimited Smut throw a hissy fit because their book did not make Goodreads Choice Awards for the year? Just wondering. Like, I get it. Like, if this was just supposed to be vampire smut. Wait, I really want Alan to read this book now, but like aloud. <laughs> yeah, it's out of it's out of context because it was a dream. Like, who the fuck cares? It's it's a literal scene that he wrote. Like, it's just it's vampire smut. Sell it as vampire smut. I don't care. It's not for me, clearly. But like, that's what it is. So miss me with all this like. Oh, this is great epic fantasy. Like, it's literally vampire smut. Like, that's... Which is fine. If that's what you want to read, cool. But, like, don't try to pretend that it's not that. Because it 100% is. Also, like, what? in my experience, well, other than Sarah J. Mass, which is why Sarah J. Mass is probably the apt comparison, mm -hmm. smutty books tend to be quite short because it's like, we're not here for plot. We're here for smut. So it's just like, here's the character, this here's the character, almost... here's the situation where we need them to be to bang, and now we'll be doing the banging for the next 100 pages. This book is 740 pages long. Yeah, so like Sarah J. Mass is also that oh, overwritten oh, for man. a book that's mainly there for the smut. <laughs> that's fine, though, Derry. You can... But don't try to sell this as some big epic fantasy. Like that's not. Don't what make this it seven hundred pages. This is edgy, edgy vampire smut. Plus, it has art in it. Like it's <laughs> illustrated. <laughs> like like cool color illustrations. With like multiple special editions, there were multiple arc editions. Like this was like a big fantasy release for the year. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it just... We haven't talked about the homophobia though. Which oh, is also we, so much are we fun. Are we talk about our boy Talon? <laughs> our boy? <laughs> Someone's boy? I don't know. The Catholic Church's boy? Talon? The, it's absolutely crucial to the world building of this epic oh, story man. to include the word sodomy several times and that it is a sin. Can't have the book without that. Can't have this fun, rompy, smut-filled vampire times without sodomy is a sin. Are we having sodomy fun yet? Sodomy is a sin, guys. And then he calls him a cock gobbler. Mm -hmm. Wink, so wink. So fun, so fun. Good God. For an entire, like, oh, this book sucks. It's like this entire thing revolves around, like, Catholic vampires. Which, like, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, Alex, but, like, God is all powerful and but bad things happen. So like is actually God all powerful? I think he might be a prick. Hmm. Aha. That philosophy. Next level. That's mm -hmm. some that's some psychology for another Oh, day you again. missed it. Because it's later on in the book. So you know how <clears throat> it's all basically the Catholic Church, obviously. And so it's instead of No, like it just is. No, but the, the, it's <laughs> not um the virgin mother, it's the mother maid. Um, so, Christ the oh, sweet mother maid, they say mm -hmm. a ton. It's first miss instead of Christmas. Um, and then, so, you know, they have the sign of the wheel instead of mm -hmm. the sign of the cross. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we have some more deep thinking philosophy when he's like, I always thought it odd that they would uh, make, the, the church would make a symbol or their symbol, the instrument of their savior's torment. Why would they make the wheel their symbol? Rather, they should have celebrated something good of, that he did in his life instead of make. I'm like, so deep, so deep. No one has thought these things before. So, yeah. Oh. All right, Richard, this isn't Twitter. Okay. Let's calm down. There's shenanigans. But yeah, like I get it too. There's going to be homophobic religious people but again it's like you chose to put this in your epic fantasy like you base your entire vampire religion setup on this like you didn't like you made that choice just saying
or are there more people in chat? I'm just kicking them out. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> as uh, yeah, so. So tell me about some stuff that I didn't get to. In the <laughs> second half of the book that apparently is a five out of five, I only read the shitty part of the book. Well, so I told you we already fault. got like the crappy vampire. Like we got the like hot topic brand version of Geralt and Siri, mm -hmm. which um, great. So great. So no, I, I'm really eager to know because I... I only read the bad part of the book. I did not get to the pinnacle of the book, which was the next. I mean, OK, so it's not a plot, right? OK, so I don't know the series of events that you missed out on, if I can remember, because it's it's a lot. I, I, I'll be honest, like in the latter half, when I realized there wasn't a plot, when mm -hmm. we had more sex and more violence and then some sexual violence and then some violent sex, mm -hmm. you know, all the combinations. As I just kind of was like, mm hmm skimming 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 um okay so things that we found out we found out that they think that the the holy grail is this kid yep um it's a living person that's the holy grail and then like the big mission right is to like save her and then like these ladies that were trying to save her and believed in this then they um might have died or did they um so then he's well then we cut back to like when he's young again and he like he does some impressive things that impress the queen so he asks a boon of the queen and he gets to like marry the like that girl that turns out to be like a bastard of the royal family or whatever that he met mm -hmm. before marries her and apparently has a kid with her and the kid's name i wonder if you can possibly guess what the name of the kid is um, patience. It's patience. Oh my god. That's why he says patience so much. Patience, cold blood. So anyway, um, so now he's guarding in the latter half of the book. He's like Geralt and Siri. Like he's like charged with guarding this like human holy grail and more shenanigans. And then he, they end up reuniting with the like chicks that were like, we have to do this ritual to bring back the daylight with the human uh, holy grail. And then he finds out that the ritual actually requires them to kill her. Mm. And he's like, I don't care about your God. And I don't care about, we'll find a different way to bring back the day. We're not killing her. And like, she figures out that his wife and child are not actually home waiting for him. They are dead. And that's why it's so important to him to save her. And she's like, I can't be that to you. I can't be the daughter that you lost. Um, and he's like, you know, whatever. I love you for yourself and blah, 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 blah. And it's so charming and, and heartwarming and, and yeah. Oh yeah. And then the present day, he tries to break out of jail again and fails at that. And, and yeah. And then we have the exact lines that you read about the skies being the color of red of her lips, blah, blah. Yeah. We end with that. Cause we came full yeah. circle. Came full Hell circle. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly so, how I needed the ending to be. I yeah, really, there you go. that, that line in particular, I was like, this better come back because it was just so epic. Yeah. I mean, that was worth all of the 800. However, how many is it? How many pages is it? I think it's 739 is what Goodreads said. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think so. Well, this well, this is 734. Oh, look, there's his family. Oh, my <laughs> family. Oh, my goodness. We oui, merci. Yeah. Did we hit them all? That was that was all three words that he used, right? Oh, okay. The very, very end. Patience, he whispered. God. The end. <laughs> Chills. Oh my god. Yeah, so here we go. Yeah, the what you just read. Um, he looked down at his hands, hand that had hands that had slain things monstrous, hands that had saved an empire, hands that had allowed the last hope for his species to slip and shatter like glass upon the stone. The sky above was dark as sin, the horizon red as his lady's lips the last time he kissed her. He ran one thumb across his fingers, the letters inked below his knuckles. Patience, he whispered. Oh, give me the next goodness. book now. My goodness. And then Imagine Dragons played as the fucking credits rolled. <laughs> oh my god. So somebody said, what were, what were things that we liked about it because clearly it must have been a love-hate relationship 
Um, I don't remember liking anything about the book. I wanted to say that I liked the art, but I actually didn't very much like the art. It it was fine. (laughs) That has nothing to do with the book, though. It's, I mean, it's a thing in the book. <laughs> sure, but it's just, it's just pictures. Um, I liked the main character. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a real big thing for lions, so yeah, I'm a real sucker for that. <sighs> I really don't know, like wanting more. <laughs> I don't, I just. So why don't you tell us what made you decide, you know what? I'm not going to finish this book, even though I'm going to chat about it. <sighs> why was it at that? Because you, it's not like it was worse. Like, it's not like it was like, fine, fine, fine. And then around 300 pages, it gets like, it was really off the rails and it's so like here, super bad. So like, why was that? The so point here's the it? thing. By like chapter seven, I already was like, there's no way in hell I'm finishing this book. And the more I talked about it and people were like, yeah somebody somebody in my discord was like oh my god i need to know like how are you liking it and i started talking about it and then i just like sunk into a pit of despair and was like just reiterating everything i was reading to the point where i was like you know what i actually hate this more than i thought and then i read some more of it and i was like nope not getting any better and then i got to what 300 or so pages how how many chapters is that anyway as i find this well, because it's also not just chapters; like it's the there's, oh, there's different like parts, parts. Yeah, whatever. It's the books. This dude talking. There are parts. I got to around three hundred pages or so. Whatever chapter one of part. Who gives a fuck? Light of a black sun. Sure. And I was just like, "There's no way I can read a whole other half of this book because there's four hundred plus pages left it's so fucking repetitive and i don't just mean the word fuck or in truth because obviously that's fucking repetitive and we and ma famille and um merci but it um, it wasn't interesting either to me like i was like a lot of the jokes and a lot of the scenes they felt like Mm -hmm. the same and like there's i I legitimately i thought that my audiobook had like skipped like a vinyl record because there was this line about a sin shared being twice i don't know something about that like a sin and sharing it and it's, it's obviously talking about sex and like then he says that line and then like a little bit while later he says the exact same line again and i'm like yes i get it i fucking get it <laughs> use it again but uh, one of my favorite things that someone has said about the book was someone uh in my uh patron in my discord um said despite the misogyny animal abuse and the creepy underage children crap it's truly the dialogue i hate the most imagine your book is so bad that rape isn't the worst of it <laughs> <laughs> yes that's yeah i mean i just like all things aside the, it's I, not funny it's i not don't clever. like the writing style everything is super immature um the i yeah i'm not leaning into this dairy it's i can lean into some camp every once in a while but this is way too much book for me to lean in and actually like have fun with this it was dog shit from the jump. Like the first page, we were like, uh-oh. I mean, I'm happy for, I guess I'll say this. So like for people um, telling me they love this book, I'm like, oh Have my God. But if Derry is saying that she enjoys this book because she regards it as like campy nonsense and is like enjoying it on that level, then I'm not as terrified of the person expressing love for this book. Like I don't quite see how you get that out of it. Yeah. And I don't, fully buy that Jay Kristoff intends it to be read that way. But if that's how you're reading it and that's how you're enjoying it, then like, I, I guess, I guess. But like for people out here who are like, Empire of the Vampire is the most epic, most yeah. amazing, most engrossing, most deep thinking, bloody brilliant work of epic fantasy. And there are many, many people, the majority five stars are saying mm-hmm. that. Like, no, 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 no. I said, yeah, like I... The two American, yeah, probably. It just, it didn't, none of it was funny to me. Like, none of the jokes were funny. None of the dialogue was witty. It all felt childish to the point I was like, who the fuck is this for? Like, why why do people talk like this? And if it's going to be a real Aussie 
story. Why not just set this? Why not do your world building and make this like an Australian vampire like sh- uh, book? Because you know what? That would be pretty unique. Yeah. We've seen French vampires done much, 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 much better. So like just do Australian vampires and like go for it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. And yeah, I will say other than a few people saying it's super Aussie, like just go with it. Everyone else is straight up praising this as if it was just like the pinnacle of fantasy when this came out. And I don't I don't get that. And still are. Like it's <laughs> Aussies right? swear better than that. It was too edgy and not inventive. But I mean, like, okay, speaking um, as an expert being, having never stepped foot in Australia, and I think I've met an Australian once, um, but, uh, being the expert that I am, my yeah. impression of Australian humor and of Australians and that is that it's quite chill and kind of laid back. And this is the opposite of that in every way. This is not chill. This is not laid back. This is like, I have feelings and emotions and blood and sex and that. Yeah, like just just quickly doing a quick scroll through Goodreads. People are just even somebody that get, almost gave it five stars said a bit too edgy and angsty to be an absolute favorite. But I loved the story and character so much I can't rate it any lower. And like that's how so many of these are of like. Everyone's just praising how beautifully written it is and how epic it is and how fantastic it is and how well written it is. And I don't understand. I just don't. So Mara wants to know, would either of us ever read anything by Jake Kristoff again? No, because I tried to read Nevernight years ago. And Nevernight is better than this. And oh my God, I was like, I never want to read this. <laughs> like... I, I sampled Nevernight. I heard a lot about it, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. Don't need to read that. Nevernight had a plot. <sighs> sure. So at I'll least in, it seemed it. like it was going to, and then it totally didn't. And then I was like, oh, you fooled me once. Shame on you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm reading a part of the vampire. Shame on me. <laughs> I mean, I would say I the only J. Kristoff book that I would read is if I were to reread Illuminate, which is the, the YA yeah. space evil ai mixed media thingy you that's one that's like written Hoffman. really weird isn't it like literally on the pages isn't it like yeah, it's mixed media so it's like you see like reports diagnostics you see like messages between crew members like it, it's a really interesting format and it's just yeah. it's that it's no like weird edgy sex stuff it's like a ya book that he co-wrote with somebody it's like a yeah. fun space adventure with a cool like uh format concept so like i would reread that but yeah. I would not read a new book by Jay Kristoff unless it was like another Illuminate book. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's like, because I watched most of like his review, or not his review, his review was dog shit. His interview with Mike, like when that happened, and I was kind of baffled at like how normal he is. And then... Uh, I've met which, him twice. Which obviously like doesn't directly translate to books. Like Brian Lee Durfee is a goofball on his channel, but I love his writing. It's t- you would never expect it. So like, I get that it's totally different. I genuinely don't believe that Jay Kristoff writing will ever work for me because it's probably more of this. And I, I see a lot of like, I love never night and this topped it. And I hated the tiny bit that I read of never night. And I hated the 300 pages that I read of this and none of it ever worked for me. So I would have no reason to read another Jay Kristoff book unless I wanted to go in and be like, this book's going to be shit. And that's just going to re reinforce my opinion. It's like, I don't also know. it's just, so like never night. Like I also, I mean, I totally get why people didn't like it like, uh, like from go and like mm. now, you know, having experienced more of Jay Kristoff than like things that I was more willing to overlook or be like, Oh, we'll just kind of go with it. Now I'm like, mm. yeah, Actually, I've seen that this actually is... I, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt on a lot of things. Yeah. And, like, it had a plot or seemed to have a plot. It had a much more interesting kind of, like, narrative hook to be like, mm-hmm. I want to see what the answer to some of this is. Like, I want to see where this goes. Yeah. Um, the footnotes thing, while annoying for, like, a lot of readers, it was, like, the way that he did insert a lot of humor, where, like, mm-hmm. instead of having your main character say, like, 
calm your tits. Yeah. Like you had like a kind of sass in the footnotes as like commentary on what's going on currently. So I was like, that's interesting format. That's a dynamic reading experience. It seemed mm-hmm. like world building was going on there. And it seemed, cause I didn't know that well, it seemed like he thought this through a lot. Cause it seemed like there was a lot of world building in the footnotes, like stories about the, the lore, like behind mm-hmm. all these objects and all of these places. And I was like, I feel like there's a lot to this. And like, some of it's like very overwritten, and like, I was like, it's a stylistic choice. Like it feels intentionally overwritten. So I was like, yeah. okay, okay, I'll go with this. And then it was clear in Dark Dawn that like he had no plan for this. And it just became lots of like girl on girl, which I was already mostly kind of being like, there's a lot of this. I don't, okay, whatever. And it was just that. And there was no plot and the world completely crumbled and made no sense. And it was clear that he didn't know the answers to his own mystery boxes. And I was like, okay, so no, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> None of this is for me. I mean, ultimately, like what Matt was saying in chat, if he plays up for his audience, I'm sure he does because I'm sure he has his audience that loves his books. Clearly, he's he does. writing it for them. Clearly. Well, and then, like, Empire of the Vampire. So, like, Never Night, like I said, I gave it benefit of the doubt. I think it had actual merit even now. I would say, mm. like, okay, he didn't actually have the world building that he thought that I thought yeah. he did. He was pulling it out of his ass. But it still, I think, was better, like, paced as a novel to get you hooked and to be like, I want to see where this is going. There's a plot here. Mm. Like, some of the humor was genuinely funny. Um, and it was also, like, 400, 500 pages. And yeah. Empire of the Vampire was, like, way worse on the sex stuff, way worse on the violence stuff, way worse on the overwritten I think I'm so cool stuff. And it's, like, nearly 800 pages. And yeah. I was just like, it's, like, everything that, like, Never Night was, like, and this was well, just Neverdite's like leaning into shorter. all the worst parts of that. And I was yeah. like, Why? or there's just because the book is twice as long, there's just more, more room for activities. He just kept doing it. I mean, it did help that in Nevernight, Mia Corvair is not telling her own story. Someone yeah. else is telling it. So when she's doing bloody and sexual things, you do mm. wonder why someone else knows about this and is telling you about it. But she's not saying like, don't ask me my story. Okay, fine. I'll tell you in lurid detail all of the yeah. sexy things I did in first. Per- like, you know, it does make a difference <laughs> that it's not I did this and I felt this and I'm telling you right now that I had this happen. But I'll tell my story in my own way, in my own time, cold blood, patience. <laughs> I think it's clear that we did not like the book. I think we could say that accurate statement. dark dawn is so bad <laughs> yeah but no this did not work for me in any way shape or form um yeah i don't know it was ridiculous it's it's bad it was staggeringly ridiculous I hate it. but again like as many times as he said fuck the thing that really annoyed me was the truth and the truth be told and the in truth that because it's already a pet peeve to me, like in other books that people have done this, where like mm. to make it sound old timey, I'm yeah. going to end every sentence with like, truth be told. <laughs> I'm just like, that doesn't make it old timey. And in an 800 page book where it happens on every page, <laughs> it's a lot. Huh. It was it was too much for me. Yes, this is going to be a series. Oh, I'm sure. But patience. <laughs> He's still writing it. <laughs> And yeah, the humor, it's just, it's, it's monotonous. Mm-hmm. Like some of these jokes, I think like, cause we were talking about this too, like I- individually, like having a character say, I think if God exists, then God's a prick in everybody take a shot in a Joe Abercrombie book. Um, if a character would totally say something like that, but it would be really casual. It wouldn't be yeah. this like edgy moment. It would be where. Some some character, some zealot is talking about God being the most important thing ever. And then you'd have a Logan Nine Fingers type character be like, well, if God does exist, I think he's a prick. And just because like, like there would be on. like an atrocity happening or like somebody would be talking shit and then get their head cut off and be like, see, like it would be that and it would be funny. It would be it deadpan just be and it would be open into the book being like before anyone starts talking like this is what you need to know. Like, come on. It's obnoxious. It's like, how do you tell me that you're an edge lord without telling me that you're an edge lord? <laughs> yeah. This god guy, I've got some opinions. <laughs> Real asshole, this one. Oh man. 
All right, if we're going to keep talking, I need to go pee. So I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go pee, go pee. I'll be right back. <sighs> so how shall I entertain thee? Shall I tell thee my story? Patience, good people. I will tell it in my own time, in my own way. <laughs> Emo hair flip for me or for Alex? Uh, I'm willing to count the egregious use of things for you to include the next time you have to repute, refute the opinion of quality for Empire of the Vampire. I don't understand what you mean. But yes, this is going to be a series. <laughs> Publicity push for another one. I mean, hopefully it won't be as insane as it was for this. Because I feel like, I don't know, the first books in series, you know, they want to get you hooked and hyped. So the publisher will be like pushing it. And then the assumption is that with uh, sequels, it's like the built-in audience that read the first one that were definitely so hooked by this first one that they're like, where is the follow-up? Where is the sequel? <laughs> uh i definitely did not enjoy the book so rest assured to speak truth which i have been this whole evening truth be told the book was dog shit um yeah i'm really happy for you if you i mean if you enjoyed it you know it's a really it's a really long book to hate so it was a long Long suffering over here. Uh, getting to be where you won't read any new fantasies until hype dies. Yeah, I get that. I I feel like I'm pretty... I'm just like, I'm just reading first law all the time. And then occasionally, like, I resurface to see what else is good. And then I'm like, oh, there isn't anything as good as first law. Cool. Back to rereading first law. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's, well, this book, I feel like it, beca it became notorious about the hype because, like, even for for hype, most books don't get multiple different arc editions. Like, that is just a different level of, I just, yes, and Hob. Although, you know, I, I will say, oh, my God. <laughs> it's a very good look. I wish you had a wig, too. But I will say, okay, so Hob blurbed this, and we have questions. You yes. know who didn't blurb this? Joe Abercrombie, because he has standards. Got him. Truth be told, I was very hydrated, so I had to fucking pee. <laughs> we. Merci. I was going to say, you should merci for being given the opportunity to go and, and we, we. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ah, oh, geez. Where were we? Oh, I didn't know. Because I know Piera is like kind of friends with him. Really? That's surprising that she didn't like it. Because yeah. I figured she would have loved it. Yeah. Because it's so Aussie. I would have assumed. It's super Aussie. <laughs> Whatever <Yeah>. that means. <laughs> Can someone please, as my voice dives deeper into the shithole of, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Into the abyss of <clears throat> dayless Ashfield skies. Piera Ford Day's is death. a YouTuber. She did, um, she kind of did an adaptation of Nevernight, but like as a web series. Yeah. But she's also just a booktuber that like talks about books. Dude, Assassin's Quest is amazing. I mean, it it is again is it a great relief to me, Derry, that the reason that you gave this five stars is that you interpret this as camp. I simply cannot interpret it we'll that way, it. but I am glad that that's why you like it and not that you do think that it's like deep lore, epic, yeah. hob level fantasy. Cause I would be so, <laughs> so concerned if that I was what yet, you thought. I, I'm going to call out all the, the old white dudes. I have yet to see a single one of them say how Aussie and campy and stupid fun this book is. No. They're all dead ass serious Stick. that this is just really fucking cool. <laughs> and my voice sounds awful. <laughs> you sound <laughs> However, tired of this. My nonsense. point stands. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm just tired of this bullshit. This You'd sucks. be more believably the beleaguered, uh, weary killer in his cell. And we're asking you to tell your life story. And you're like, 
truth be told, I don't give a fuck. I don't. Now let me tell you, <laughs> when I was 14, what happened with this girl I once knew? Oh. It was really fucking bloody. I won't believe died. it unless you tell lurid details. I, it's essential to understand who I am as a character and what will narratively happen later on in my tale of my own life for me to tell you specifics. Yes. No. It's just like on it, like just that. Okay, I would never like this book. It would not make me like this book. So I guess you shouldn't care what I think and you shouldn't make any changes for my sake because it won't really ultimately matter. But like just the simple change of like having the jailer be like, tell me your life story. And he's like, I don't want to. Okay, fine. Dot, dot, dot. And then we just like have the narrative start and just stay being the narrative mm -hmm. and then have an interlude where we can have a conversation again between the jailer and the person telling their own story but like having that intercut the whole time where like the entire book is in quotation marks mm. to constantly remind me that he's supposedly saying this out loud to somebody right now is just like no yeah man it's how people talk i really someone in the chat that likes this book please explain to me the just the, the full list of the fantastic characters that are in this book. I would love to hear from someone in the chat. There was someone with a lion heart. Who was that? What? What's the French word for lion? Uh, Leon. Oh, that's it. Wait, is it ma famille? No, that's not it. <laughs> oui. <laughs> Why is this itchy? Something's poking me. Yeah, it's Gabriel, because he's telling Gabriel, his story. Gabriel, this whole because he time. spits out fire. Yes. Yes, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. I like that comment. That's funny. <laughs> no one believes he's saying all this because no, he he's not. It's dumb. It's just... Or then give him a reason to be eager to tell his story. Because, like, Kvothe is like, all right, I'm going to tell you my story. Let's do it. <laughs> Whereas here, you know, I just. Man. Um... Why is someone talking about Speaker of the Dead? That's a book, isn't it? Yes, it's the sequel to Ender's Game. One of my other favorite books. <laughs> Good times. That book is also a legendary masterpiece, I'm told. Yes. Probably the same demographic thinks it's legendary. Mm hmm It's pretty accurate. I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say about this book. I hate it. I didn't like uh, yeah, the writing style. I feel like style. mostly I just have questions. <laughs> Why? I didn't like the writing style. I don't like the characters. I don't like the narrative structure. I don't like how childish it is. I don't like how edgy it is. You can tell me all day long how funny it is and to lean into it. I didn't get that at all. I just constantly got this is an angry 14 year old trying to be cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, I didn't like it. Yeah, and you but you didn't read the excellent five star half. I didn't. I just read the shitty one star half. So it's your fault that you hate it. it is. Everyone's convinced that I secretly love it and I'm just humoring you. So as soon as you left, they're like, you know, you can tell us, Liana, that how you really feel about how much you actually truly love this book. Yeah. So. Um, what is Bob truth Jones be told, about? I did not. Truth be told, what the fuck is Bob Jones talking about? Was, wasn't that the, the background comment? Isn't that your first comment in chat? Did I miss something? Am I crazy? Well, those are two separate questions. You are crazy, but that's not well, one. The first thing I saw was the audible. I said, that's funny. I literally just said that. And now he's mad that I ignored his comments. That was the first one I saw, and I thought it was funny. Okay. But yeah, that's it. I have nothing else to say. Yeah, Derry, unfortunately, I, I did not find any joy in this book. I don't think Leanna found... I did find joy in roasting Another. it. True. That's always fun. So 
which we kind of anticipated going into it that it was going to lean this direction. Even so, like, I honestly did not expect to hate it as much as I did. Because I was like, I, I don't think I'm going to like this. I think this is going to be bad. And I was not prepared Yeah, for how bad. bad that it was. It was real bad. Didn't like it. My lack yeah, of books. Oh my God. Do I have to do this all the time? Why does it? People always make me do this. Listen, here's the issue with the setup, folks. Okay. <sighs> when you come over this way, here's all the books. My desk is on this side. Here's me. Hello. So when I do live chats, all you get to see is this. There's some books. See? But see, I film this way. I think you should just keep the camera on the bookshelf and be a disembodied voice. Hello. Perfect. Well, that's, no, about. you're not showing us books. You're showing us football stuff. That's going to disprove you're a booktuber even harder. <laughs> you definitely it's don't read books. Bear. You like football. Okay, fine. Here, I'll put on Red Rising for Perfect. Vienna. There you go. Perfect. There's a book. And then the I'm so fucking edgy right now being your name. It's perfect. Exactly. It's pretty edgy to yeah. not be on camera, I think. There's some books. There's some Kingdoms books. It is a comfy death. chair, yeah. Mara. That's where I read. My hat's in the way. This is this is terrible. There's a dog. <laughs> Hello, Loki. Anyway, that's why. Uh, that's why. Okay. So, yes, he tried to copy empire not empire the vampire that's okay so he yeah he legit in his interview was like so this book is if interview the vampire met name of the, name wind. Of the wind while game of thrones, game of all thrones seasons in the background playing in the background simultaneously because i think he said consecutively cool. not simultaneously Whatever. and then he yeah. also had the audacity in that review to say i'm the guy that wrote me a fucking corvair i'm just like is that supposed to be an accolade sir get the fuck out of here Oh my god! It's not like yes, that. I'm a Cowboys fan. Uh, if, you, if you didn't already tell, my shirt. It means you're not a fake fan. What, like Jimmy? It's fake a song of Ice and Fire fan, dude. My throat is fucked. Kind of like Gabriel De Leon. <laughs> no, that was whatever his name. Whoever was biting his penis, her throat was fucked, not his, because he. What did his little death? Oh, uh, <laughs> my little death reading this. Because it's so funny, guys. It's so funny that he calls his cum his little death. It's hilarious. So, like, again, I'm very happy for you, Terry. But, like, the way this grown ass man keeps writing lesbians having sex on page is just concerning to me. <laughs> like, I have very little fun imagining that man writing those scenes. Yeah, he's almost 50. It's getting a little weird. Like maybe that's just me. It started that, a little weird. That's it's a little weird. I mean, it's also weird when like all of like the basically in his books, if you're a female, your options are whore or lesbian. Those are the two in the sorting ceremony. They they let you choose. And then the dudes are all um basically straight and then mm -hmm. sodomy is referred to as a sin and then we very very liberal thinking gabriel is like actually i always thought it shouldn't matter to me who you're fucking or whose cock you're gobbling because god is a prick and i'm so edgy and i've got mm -hmm. deep thoughts and you're like what a guy oh my god he's a real one that lion see but but you see he didn't say le petit more he's nope. because the only french words are his name ma famille we oui and mercy <laughs> nothing else i mean yes we all know stephen king is a weirdo and i literally just got done mentioning that in my last live chat that i was on before this where stephen king just goes off the rails and was like hey i'm just gonna do some weird sex stuff now and i'm just like why stephen king that doesn't belong here in fairness to stephen king he was on a lot of drugs <laughs> like i'm reading the dark tower and all of a sudden there's a demon that just sexually assault the somebody i'm like yep mm -hmm. okay this is why is this a, why is this a thing don't know no i'm not defending that shit either oh goodness okay fine little death translates into an orgasm whatever it's weird but then he should have like this was the time to use the french jay christoph Why'd you drop the ball? Leave it French for this. Yeah. 
Um, Whatever. Yeah. So. We're selling this book. I mean, Robin Hobb. Okay, like, I don't think Robin Hobb feels the way you do, Derry. She wrote, Empire of the Vampire is a wonderfully crafted tale. The pieces as meticulously interlocked as fine woodwork. You don't say that about intentional camp. Nope. I certainly don't. I haven't read Never Night, so I can't roast it. Other than the what I know happens in that book. I wonder if I like <laughs> open to a random page, I'll find some nonsense. If you'll find what? Some nonsense. I, I'm sure you will. Truth be told. Truth be told. Truth be fucking told. I just, I just, it's so dumb. It's so yeah. Let's see this. Oh. I flipped open and it says, I have forever, boy. Truth told, I've never yeah. tasted impossible like this. Just what is that? I don't know, man. Bad writing. Also, there's like a place called Skyfall in it. So the entire time I was like, is this a fucking James Bond movie? You can't even yes. come up with a different name. Oh. I, is Bob Jones on crack? I've This person's saying weird shit <coughs> anyway i literally can't talk anymore i have nothing left to say about this book i don't like it yeah it's bad it's pretty much all there is to say about it <laughs> brilliant i'm happy for not. you all that like it uh, I can't, oh laney taylor what are you doing brilliant and unput downable with tenderness and light bound into the bitter dark of a grim and fascinating laney laney where was the tenderness laney No. Uh, yeah, I don't think these people think it's camp. They don't. See, yeah. <laughs> they don't. Because it's not supposed to be. <laughs> it would be, yeah. Maybe they got... There were so many different arcs of this book. Maybe they all just got different stories. You got the really serious version of it where none of this happens. Uh -huh. They're like, what are you guys talking about? I think it was excellent. <laughs> he actually just sent them Interview with a Vampire. <laughs> <sighs> okay well there you have it folks empire of the vampire it's not good it's just Unless really you awesome you didn't get it <laughs> i can't i can't take this book seriously and not in a good way i just i hate it it's bad <laughs> i wish i hadn't read it i didn't even finish it i was gonna say i actually read this fucking thing yeah and it's it's your fault that I read it. How is it my fault? Yours and Jimmy's idea. Jimmy's not here. Look, and Jimmy you didn't finish it. Okay. I'm the only one that actually read this book cover to cover. That's your fault. <laughs> I'm just smarter and I stopped 400 pages before you. You are smarter. I'm just <sighs> a dumb whore because in the sorting <sighs> ceremony, I didn't choose lesbian. So. Oh, man. Yep. <sighs> That's it. That's you find not about. funny thing. I'm just so relieved that you were laughing at this book. <laughs> so relieved. That was the best part of this live is finding out. Because I did see that you gave this five stars, Derry, when I went to give it one star. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very, very, very glad to hear why you gave it five stars. We can disagree about it. But yeah, I'm relieved. And you are being given um, recommendations on soothing your throat. What? Honey Does that have to do lemon. with a little death? <laughs> no, honey and lemon. <laughs> Good. Because that would be weird. <sighs> All right. Well, that's that then. Don't read it, guys. Don't read it. It's the good word. Truth be told. Yeah, I'm going to go drink some <laughs> whiskey now. And if you love me, please never use the phrase truth be told or in truth around me because it will trigger me. Use it Just, constantly. It's not a word in my vocabulary As often anymore. as possible. Uh, okay. That's that's that then. I hope everybody has a happy Halloween. I hope they spend that Halloween doing something more fun than reading Empire of the Vampire. <laughs> yeah. That's that then, I think. Yeah? Any final thoughts? Can't wait for book two. <laughs> <laughs> Without reading book one, you'll just go right into book two. Well, you already spoiled it, Patience. Now I know everything. I was going to say.
for book two, patience. <laughs> All right. Bye.